Max of Our Spectacular Bodies by Maddie Mortimer. This is a coming of age story about a woman who is dying from cancer. And if that doesn't immediately put you off this novel, then buy it, borrow it, steal it. You will not be disappointed. Gunpowder fiction and plot does not condone theft unless it's against organisations who profit off the civil war in Congo. Fuck you, Jeff Bezos. If it weren't for the fact that Layla Motley was also nominated for the Booker Prize this year, Maddie Mortimer would be the youngest ever nominee. She is 26 years old, and it is simply remarkable that somebody so young could have such insight, such knowledge, and write in the glorious way that Mortimer writes. This makes it sound like Mortimer is an incredible writer for her age, when actually she is just an incredible author who has written an incredible debut novel. This novel will get you in the feels. It'll grab you in the tender spots and gently crush it until you're a sobbing emotional wreck. And you'll know what it's doing. You'll know what's going to happen. And that will somehow conspire to make it even more emotional. I was so sad and angry while reading this book that Nell asked me what I was making for dinner that evening and I snapped back at her. Shut up, I'm not! We had pancakes with caramelised apples. The structure. Maps of Our Spectacular Bodies is broken into three narratives, timelines, voices. Timeline one, Leah has cancer and she is married to Harry. They have a daughter, Iris. Timeline two, Leah is Iris's age. She is living at home with her mother, Anne, and her father, Peter. A young boy, Matthew, moves in with them to become a priest under the guidance of Leah's father. Leah is attracted to him. Narrative three, the cancer. I know a few of you may be concerned by giving the cancer a voice. It's experimental and it's a bit risky, but it's fine, it works, and it's an effective way of giving you information about what happens in Leah's body. And we spend significantly less time in this narrative than we do with the others. I think the cancer is a super effective tool at heightening the emotion, knowing that what Leah, Iris and Harry think of Leah's survival chances are not accurate makes the news even more devastating or rejoiceful. It really heightens the emotions. The two timelines have a wonderful symmetry to them. The mother-daughter relationship between Anne and Leah, or Leah and Iris, are centre stage. But they are very different relationships. The love that Leah feels for Iris, love that is so clearly returned, is expressed so simply and so completely, but love is too broad a word. Reverence is more accurate. It is not that Leah loves Iris unconditionally, but she thinks she is the smartest person she's ever met. Leah places hero status on Iris. It's a great demonstration of the type of love Leah feels for her daughter. Their relationship is such a feel-good component of this novel, a novel that really isn't that feel-good at all. I could continue to talk about the relationships in this book and tell you how emotional and beautiful this novel is, but I'd be repeating myself. And you get it. I like devastating books. It's pretty safe Scott territory, and this book does it brilliantly. But this isn't just an emotional novel. Themes really make a book great. And one thing I loved was that Leah was the same age as Iris in the earlier timeline. And the characters kind of blended a little bit. Normally, this would be a criticism, but this is intentional. And it really fits in with the themes of the novel. Mortimer isn't the first and won't be the last author to combine a novel about a terminal illness with religious and spiritual exploration. And the idea that you continue to live on through your children is just one of the spiritual beliefs Mortimer explores. And the blending of Iris and Leah really adds to that. As too is the blending of Peter and Harry earlier in the novel. While they become very different characters, they fill similar roles in Leah's life. 
Similarly, Leah and Iris are not the same person, but we learn a lot about one from the actions and characteristics of the other. The intentional blending of characters has, I think, caused some reviewers to say that this isn't a character-focused novel. That's absurd. You can't craft a novel as emotional as this without good characters. Leah and her love for Iris. Leah's thoughts of, will Iris get in trouble for staying home from school because her mum is dying? And the telling off that Leah will receive once she is dead for letting her daughter skip school. And then the realisation that she won't be there and that Iris, she'll have to make those choices on her own. The characters are well crafted. They're distinct by the end of the novel. You just have to trust in Mortimer's abilities. And she's incredibly able. The writing has an Ali Smith-style playfulness to it. It is poetic in places. The use of yellow or red to describe various emotions is very Smith to me. But the plot doesn't falter for long. And the contrasting tones of the aggressive, malevolent and chaotic cancer has compared to to the sensible and normal tones of the other timelines really reminds me of Ruth Ozeki's writing. You can be suddenly quite disoriented, but placed back into the story quickly with your bearings in hand. This is a stunningly complete novel that has something for all readers. It should be the favourite for the Booker Prize. It is so much more than a brilliant, emotionally devastating novel. And I can't remember the last time a debut author has impressed me so much. I cannot wait to see what Mortimer writes next. And if you've not already done so, get yourself a copy fast and easy five stars.